today we're going to cover chapters 12 and 13 in 1 Corinthians. So we've seen last Sunday in, in chapter 11, the Apostle Paul, he, he's been over, the, over these chapters addressing issues in the Corinthian church. And in chapter 11, he dealt with the issue of head covering and he dealt with the issue of how to rightly partake. In the Lord's table and the importance of it. He brings out revelation, the truth concerning partaking in the Lord's table. Very important. And now he begins, he changes topic. He begins to talk about spiritual gifts and spiritual functions in the church. So essentially chapters 12, 13, and 14 address uh, these, uh, these two topics. The, uh, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And the functions of every believer in the body, in the church. And uh, in the course of that, uh, he interjects it with chapter 13, which is a chapter uh, on, on love and walking in love. And so we cover chapters 12 and 13 today. Uh, we'll do chapter 14 tomorrow. Uh, not tomorrow, next Sunday. You're welcome to come back tomorrow. <laughs> Sometimes it got a default in the Bible college mode, you know. It's like, <laughs> tomorrow we'll continue. It's like, okay. Uh, so, chapter 12, we're going to read verses 1 through 11 to start off. Verse 1. Now, concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles carried away to these dumb idols, however you were led. Therefore, I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus accursed. And no one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are diversities of gifts by the same Spirit. There are differences of ministries by the same Lord. There are diversities of activities. But it is the same God who works all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the spirit. To another the word of knowledge through the same spirit. To another faith by the same spirit. To another gifts of healings by the same spirit. To another the working of miracles. To another prophecy. To another discerning of spirits. Uh, to another different kinds of tongues. To another the interpretation of tongues. But one and the same spirit works. All these things, distributing to each one individually as he wills. Very important chapter. Our passage here, and we will go through the rest of the chapter. Let's quickly draw some insights here from these verses. First of all, verse 1, Paul is saying, concerning spiritual gifts, I don't want you to be ignorant. You see, as God's people, as believers, we should not only know, but be trained and be equipped in the exercising of these spiritual gifts. And this is true for all of us. And not just for the pastors or for those in ministry. Okay, uh, we leave the spiritual gifts to those kinds of people. You know, they need it. <laughs> no, this is for all believers. He's writing to the body. He's writing to the church. And he's saying, brethren. I don't want you to be ignorant concerning spiritual gifts. So all of us, we need uh, to not only be educated or informed, but we also need to be equipped. We need to be trained concerning these gifts because we want or they should be uh, an expression through us. And, you know, he just draws a little comparison with their background, verses 2 and 3. He says, you know, uh, as Gentiles, when you worship idols, they, they were dumb idols. That means they didn't express themselves. They couldn't speak or do anything. But we serve a God who expresses himself or he uses the word he manifests himself. Our God manifests himself. And he manifests himself through his people. And that's what the gifts of the Holy Spirit are. They are the manifestations of, of the Holy Spirit. They are expressions. God is speaking. God is working through his people by his spirits. Amen. And God is saying, look, I am here. Very much here. So that's what the manifestations of the Spirit are. And really, uh, he's saying, look, when you honor the Lord, you cannot call Jesus as Lord except by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is who empowers us to walk in submission to the Lordship of Jesus. So the fact that the Holy Spirit is expressing himself through you is indicative that you are in submission to Jesus Christ. You acknowledge him as Lord, unlike the, the idols. They can't speak, they can't express 
themselves. Now, verse 4, I want to point out just a few things here. There's a lot uh, we could talk about, just highlight a few things. He talks about diversities of gifts. The word gifts there is charismata. They are gifts of grace. Charis is the word grace. So these gifts are gifts of grace. So let's all say gifts of grace. All right? They are not works amata. They are charismata. Gifts of grace. That means this is God by his grace expressing himself through you. Now, of course, uh, there are things you and I do and we need to learn how to prepare ourselves, how to, you know, work with God in the expression of these gifts. That, that's our part. That we have a part to play. Uh, but really, they are expressions of the grace of God through our lives. I mean, so they, they're not, you know, like, okay, I, I have attained a certain level of spirituality and that's why these gifts are operating through me. No, they are gifts of grace and they'll always remain gifts of grace. You understand that? Okay, you can say amen. All right. Now, he talks about gifts in verse 4. In verse 5, he talks about ministries. And then, uh, which literally means services or offices or, uh, you know, we can use the word functions or, uh, and then in verse 6, he talks about activities, which really means they're expressions of God's energy, God's power. We talk about uh, workings, manifestations, effects of God's power. So gifts, ministries, and activities. Three things that, that are available for all of us as believers. So I, just to help us understand that, I will use this analogy. You see, the gifts are like our toolbox. So every believer who, empowered by the Holy Spirit has a toolbox. So just pretend you say, I have a toolbox. <laughs> All right, you don't seem very convinced. So <laughs> let's do it again. I have a toolbox. You see, you have a toolbox that God has given to you by the empowering of His Spirit. That toolbox has nine tools in it. I mean, he mentions it here. So every believer has it. You've been baptized in the Holy Ghost. You have the power of God operating through your life. This toolbox is yours. You may be a businessman. You're carrying this toolbox along with your backpack, laptop, bag, or briefcase to your work. Because you're a Christian even at work. Are you with me? So you are carrying your toolbox with you wherever you go. You may be a school teacher. When you go to your place of work tomorrow morning, you are carrying with you a toolbox with nine gifts in it or nine tools in it. You're a school teacher, but you've got this toolbox with you, given to you by the Holy Spirit. Diana here is in performing arts. She may be teaching people how to dance, but she has a toolbox with nine tools in it. While she's teaching people how to dance. <laughs> Amen. So all of us have that. Now you see, our, that's our gifts. The gifts of the Holy Spirit. Uh, and people empower by the Holy Spirit. You have, these with, you have this with you. Now, we also have different ministries. Ministry describe your function. So just for the analogy, we can use, think about an electrician, a plumber, a carpenter, whatever else. They all have this toolbox. They have similar tools. They all have a screwdriver in it. They all maybe have a hammer in it. They have this toolbox with them. But their ministries are different. One's an electrician, one's a plumber, one's a whatever, carpenter, so on. The activities, meaning how this tool is expressed through this particular ministry, the same gift expressed through them may be a little different. The carpenter may use the screwdriver to put nails into the wood. Uh, the electrician may use a screwdriver in a little different way, maybe to tighten screws on latches. Uh, the plumber will use the same screwdriver to do, get a little different kind of work done. So those are activities, the expressions of God's working, which are different. But the tool being used is the same. Are you understanding this? So the gifts, ministries, and activities, that's something for all of us as believers. The expression of the gifts may be varied. That's what the, the same gifts are expressed differently through all of us. For example, the gift of the word of wisdom. If you're a counselor, uh, you know, people are coming to you uh, with their problems. Now the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the word of knowledge. Uh, by that you will understand the root cause of their problem. 
and the word of wisdom will be able to, you'll be able to sp speak the right words to help them come out of their problem. Now, you're a counselor. You have your training as a counselor. You've done your MA in psychology or whatever uh, and all of that. All of that is good. That's acquired skills. But here the Bible is talking about spiritual gifts. The spiritual gifts are not acquired skills, but they are supernaturally endowed on you as a believer by the empowering of the Holy Spirit. And you blend the two in whatever you're doing, whatever your vocation is. It's okay. Blend it. The Holy Spirit is not afraid to be next to you in your place of work. Amen? So you blend it. Now, you may be a businessman. You may be, you know, uh, sitting with people in a boardroom and, and, and you're know, discussing whatever technology, whatever your area of business is. But right there, the Holy Spirit can empower you with words of wisdom. Maybe even the discerning of spirit saying, hey, the guy you're speaking to, he may be a multi-millionaire, but he's actually a crook. Don't deal with him. And you need, or you can have the expression, the discerning of spirit, so know what's in his heart. And you know, should I proceed, should I not? Now you may have your uh, acquired skills, which is good, your acquired training through college, which is good, all of that is good, but you combine that with the empowering of, your Holy, of the Holy Spirit. Are you with me? And we also use those gifts as we minister to one another here. But the point I want to make is this. He says there in verse 7, the manifestation of the Spirit is given to a select few. Let's try it again. <laughs> the manifestation of the Spirit is given to, how you guys have, you have your Bibles open? <laughs> all right, let me see your Bible. Do you all have Bibles open? <laughs> okay, so please follow with me, verse 7. The manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one, each one. That means every believer. That means you. The Holy Spirit wants to manifest, express himself through you by his gifts. To each one. For the profit of all, for the benefit of other people. So one way to live a life that will be of a blessing to other people is to let the Holy Spirit manifest himself through you by his gifts. Amen. Amen. So you say, God, make me a blessing to people around me. Here, here's the key. The manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. So that everybody can benefit from it. So you will be a blessing to people around you. So as a church, we really need to come to a place where every believer is able to work with the Holy Spirit to manifest all nine gifts of the Spirit. To be a blessing to people. Are you with me? And are you ready to make that journey? So this is not church as usual. The church as usual is you come and watch the pastor perform. But that's not APC. APC is every believer is a minister. I'll let it repeat it again. <laughs> APC is every believer is a minister. You've got to be equipped. You got to be trained. You got to be activated so that all nine gifts of the Holy Spirit flow through you so that you can benefit people around you. You're not here to be a consumer. Amen? Uh, turning up the heat a little bit. <laughs> You are here to be a contributor. You are here to be a blessing. And one of the ways is to the manifestations of the Holy Spirit. So he gives us these gifts here in verses 8 through 10. Uh, he talks about the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, of faith, the gifts of healings, the workings of miracles, prophecy, discerning of spirits, different kinds of tongues, and the interpretation of tongues. Now, we won't have time to explain each of these gifts. I'm going to do a little promo here. We have a little book called Gifts of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> it's a free APC publication available on the book table. Uh, in case you haven't, please pick up your free copy. Uh, this book deals with each of these gifts. It tells you how they operate. It tells you how you can make yourself available to the Holy Spirit, how to flow in the gifts correctly. Amen? So pick that up. Also, we have a week in school that happens every month. We have different week in schools. In fact, yesterday we had a week in school where we had a 
weekend. It's called the gifts of the Spirit. So we teach, train, equip people. We had a great time yesterday. Some of them were prophesying, uh, ministering for the first time, stepping out and prophesying and, and having words of knowledge and so on. So attend those weekend schools where we can equip you, we can train you uh, in how to flow in these gifts. And every believer needs to learn to do this. It is pointless having a toolbox, first of all, if you don't know what tools are inside. I got a toolbox. I don't know what's inside. And it's even pointless if you know the names of the tools but don't know how to use them. Screwdriver, I know what a screwdriver is. How to use it, I don't know. I'll call my pastor. <laughs> Please don't do that. You as a believer need to know how to flow in all of these gifts and minister to people. And it doesn't happen only in Sunday morning in church. These, oh, the Holy Spirit is with you wherever you go. So the gifts of the Spirit operate through you all at all days of the week. Just make yourself available to the Spirit. Look at verse 11. But one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as he... Well, the same Holy Spirit. You know, back, you know, maybe some, some decades back, uh, the early Pentecostal theology or understanding was like this. You know, uh, you got to, you know, you may have one gift. You can probably speak in tongues. Then you got to fight with God, get a second gift. If you fight hard enough, you might get three gifts. That was Pentecostal theology, maybe a couple of decades ago. But our understanding, our revelation of these things has progressed. And we understand today, as verse 11 says, the, 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 all these work, that's one and same spirit. If you have the Holy Spirit, or better still, if the Holy Spirit has you, then you have all the nine gifts. And you have the possibility, the potential to manifest all nine gifts. You're not fighting with God to get the gifts because the, the gifts came with the Spirit. The, the Bible calls them the gifts of the Spirit, not gifts of Ashish or Paul or John or James. Are you with me? So the Holy Spirit has you, then you have the gifts. What is important is for you to learn how to flow in these gifts. Are you understanding? We have made resources available for all of us to learn. And it's amazing to see you know, our youth, our young people step out and prophesy and have words of knowledge. There's wonderful stories and testimonies of things happening. How these people outside in the coffee shops, outside where they are, they minister to strangers, minister to people by the gift so that their lives can be touched. Amen. And that's why we need them. These are tools to put to work to touch people. So... Uh, that's all I will comment uh, on, on these first 11 verses. Now let's go to verse 12 to 27. So after talking about spiritual gifts that are available to us as believers, he now moves on to talk about our spiritual function in the body. And this is so important for each of us to understand. Let's read verses 12 to 27 and we'll comment on that. For as the body is one and has many members, but all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit we were all baptized into one body. Whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free. And have all been made to drink into one spirit. So by one spirit, the same Holy Spirit, he baptized us, he immersed us, he submerged each one of us. He baptized all of us into the body. So... Tell your neighbor, you're in the body. So all of us, all of us are in the body. The same Holy Spirit. He has immersed us. The word baptized simply means to immerse. So he's, he's put us in there. We are in the body. So you have no excuse now to not do anything. You're in the body. Too late. <laughs> you're in the body. As a believer. You've been put into the body. And so he's going to tell us what it means to be in the body. What does it mean to be part of the body of Christ? He goes on there in verse 14. For in fact, the body is not one member, but many. If the foot should say, because I'm not a hand, I'm not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I'm not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where would, the hear where would be the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where would be the smelling? But now, God has set the members, 
each one of them in the body just as he pleased. You know, God paid attention to each one of us. He's saying, look, I'll take Anish. I'll put Anish right here. Because that's the best place for him. And I've designed him to be right here. And I am very happy for him to be here. It says God has set. That means he's put each one of us, each one of you, each one of us. He has set each one in the body just as it pleased him. So say this with me. God is happy with my place in the body because he put me there. And I better be happy with it. <laughs> hey, God is happy with where he put you in the body. Because he said that's the best place for you. So some of us don't like where we are in the body. Because we want to be something else. It's getting quiet. No. <laughs> no. God put you there. Because he saw it fit. And he was pleased in putting you in that place. He designed you for it. He gave you what it takes for you to be in that place. If you're a heart, he, he designed you to pump blood. If you're an eye, he designed you to be able to see. If you're a ear, he designed you to just, you know, be able to hear. He designed you for that. He's, he was pleased when he put you in that place because he designed you for that place. We continue, verse 19. And if they were all one member, where would the body be? But now indeed there are many members, yet one body. And the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. No, much rather those members of the body which seem to be weaker are necessary. And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, on these we bestow greater honor. And our unpresentable parts have greater modesty. But our presentable parts have no need. But God composed the body, and notice this very carefully, having given greater honor to that part which lacks it. God composed the body. He put all this together. And in doing so, what did God do? He gave greater honor to that part which lacks it. And I'll come back and comment on that a little, a little while from now. But keep that in mind. Verse 25. That there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care for one another. And if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. Or if one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. Now you are the body of Christ and members individually. There's a lot here in this passage. And I want to just uh, highlight these things in simple statements. So just please follow along with me. The first statement I'll make here is the body has many members. So Paul is drawing an analogy between the physical human body and the body of Christ. In this case, the local church is a, an, an, exp, an expression of that spiritual body. So as a local church, we are to function like the body functions. Are you with me? Because we are a physical expression of the spiritual body. Now, the body has many members. It means that we are not all designed to be the same. Different members, different parts. So we don't need to be the same in our function uh, and in what we do. God, the body has many members. Secondly, each one of us is a member of the body. No one is not needed. So when you say, come on, get involved in the body, you say, well, no, I'll just come and go. What do you mean come and go? Does your hand come and go? No, you got to get involved. You got to get become a part of the body. That's what the local church is. It's to be a body where we, each one of us, is a part, is a member, and we are needed in the body. Three, we are not independent. We need each other. We need each other. Every member of the body, we, we need each other. For there are diverse functions in the body. All of us don't have the same function. 
So we must learn to appreciate, celebrate each other's gifting and function. So you know, we are not in competition. We complement each other. We celebrate each other, whatever we do in the body. We celebrate that. Next, God has placed each one where he saw it best for us, just as he was pleased. So there is a place for you in the body. And it's a place where God says, that's the best place for you. And it pleases me for you to be in that place. There's a place for you. A role and a function for you in the body. Are you with me? It means, right here, if you commit to this local church, it means that in this local church, which is a physical expression of that spiritual body, God has a role and he's got a function for you. Don't be on a long-term sabbatical. <laughs> Get in there, <laughs> fill your role, find your place, start functioning. Start doing what God designed you to do in the body. Right? It takes many of us, it takes many of us, all of us, to make up the whole. So without you, there is something lacking in the body. It takes all of us to make this complete. And the body will grow. We'll have more people coming. But it takes all of us to make it complete. All of us are engaged and to be engaged in the body. We can never claim independence. You know, we're part of the body. We've been designed to be a part of the body. My hand has been designed to function as part of my body. My hand can't say, I am deciding to go and function on my own. I will suffer, the hand will also suffer. You with me? So we're not designed just to float around like that. Now be a part of it. We can never claim independence. And H, God gives greater honor to what seems to have lesser honor. There will be functions that may not receive much honor from people. So, hey, pastor, everybody gets to see him. But look, I'm doing set up. I set up and I set down. <laughs> Nobody notices what I do. But I want God good news for you. The Bible says, God, God, everybody say God. God gives greater honor to that part which lacks it. That means if you lack honor from men, don't worry, the boss recognizes you. The boss is giving you greater honor. Amen. So there are going to be those functions that don't receive recognition from man. But when you are fulfilling those functions, I want you to remind yourself, God is giving me greater honor. He is putting more honor on me than on pastor. Because pastor already has it. <laughs> People listen to him. They have to listen to him, whether they like it or not. But for me, nobody sees me. They don't see what I do. But God is giving me greater honor. That's what the scripture says. So for those of us whose functions may be, you know, in the back office, God is giving you greater honor. Amen. And lastly, God doesn't want any division or strife in the body. Uh, but we demonstrate mutual love and care. God says, you know, we got all these functions, we got all different things to do, but work together as a body. Don't get into strife, no in a competition. You know, uh, it, it, whatever your function is, you're here to complement somebody else's function in the body. You're not here to compete with somebody else. Are you understanding that? All right, some of you who understand, say amen. <laughs> all right, so here's the thing I want to imp impress on our hearts. As a person, who belongs to this local church. First and foremost, you belong to the body of Christ because the Holy Spirit put you in the body. But this local church is a ex physical expression of that spiritual body. And if you're committed to this local church, it means you have a place, you have a function in the body. Amen? And I want to invite each one of us, each one, start fulfilling your function. Get involved. This body needs you. Amen? You have a role to play in the body. And as we've read, and we've enumerated uh, several different 
aspects of this. And, and so we need to function together. Let there be no division, no schism in the body, but we love and we care for each other. Now, I'm going to digress a little bit. So if you want to take a nap, now is the time. <laughs> I want to talk very briefly about gifts of the Spirit, membership gifts, and ministry gifts. It's a little digression, but hopefully it will bring things together. All right. The Bible talks about different kinds of gifts. One, we talk about the gifts of the Spirit, which this chapter enumerates. Uh, there are nine gifts of the Spirit. But the Bible also talks about what we call as membership gifts, or some people call it gifts of grace. Uh, we, we just use different language to describe this. You find this in Romans 12, verses 4 through 8. These membership gifts are related to your function. That means if God says, example, you're going to, uh, your function requires leadership, it requires the ability to teach, uh, it requires the ability to uh, whatever, it is generosity or compassion, then he's, he's put the grace for that on your life. And that's what we call as membership gifts or grace gifts. Are you understand? So if you look at the picture on the next slide, there are these nine gifts of the Spirit that are available to all of us as believers. All right, let me say it again. If you look at the picture on the next slide. <laughs> there are these nine gifts that are available to all of us as believers. But every believer has his or her own mix of what we call as membership gifts. Every believer. You see it in Scripture. Because it says in Romans 12 and also in Ephesians 4, 7, it says, to each one is given grace. That means nobody can say, I don't have it. The Bible says you have it. Each one is given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. So each one has been given. Romans 12 says, we all have different functions and having therefore gifts differing according to the grace given to us, let us use them. So you have gifts that God has put up on your life, your membership gifts, special endowments, grace on you to fulfill your function. So every believer is sitting on two sets of gifts. One is the nine gifts of the Spirit and then the membership gifts. You're sitting on it. Are you understanding? God's put it on your life. Now, for some, there are also what we call as ministry gifts. What we refer to as the apostle writes, Paul writes about this in Ephesians 4.11. He talks about the apostle, the prophet, the pastor, the teacher, the evangelist. That's given to some. So whether you have that or not, don't worry about it. If it's there, great. But you already have these two sets. The nine gifts of the Spirit and your grace gifts on your life. These are sufficient for you to fulfill your function. They define, they describe, and they will empower you in your function in the body. Whatever your function is. And we use different words. We say it's your role in the body. It's your ministry in the body. It's your life assignment. You can use different language. But basically, it's what God designed you to do. Are you with me? So, the invitation here is this. Start using these gifts. Grow in the grace on your life. Some of us may say, Pastor, I don't, I think God just forgot me. No, he didn't forget you. Maybe you haven't discovered it, but it's on you. Now, you don't want to get to heaven and say, God, I didn't know you gave it to me. But God will say, you were there in the Sunday service <laughs> on November 10th, and you heard your pastor tell you that there are grace gifts on your life. <laughs> so you are without excuse. <laughs> Are you listening? So it's on your life. Some of you may be empowered to be business people. That's okay. Some of you may be empowered to be scientists. Some of you may be empowered to be, you know, uh, designers. Uh, whatever. There, there is grace on your life to do whatever God's called you to do. It's grace. And you can grow in grace. That means it's not like God says, I'll give you two, two milliliters of grace and that's all you got. No. The Bible says there is more grace. But more grace comes by using the grace you already have. So if you don't use the grace already on your life, God is not going to say, let me give more. What's the point? Are you listening? So that function is what Paul is talking about here in the body. And now we move back to verse 28, uh, 1 Corinthians 12. He says here, 
And God has appointed these in the church, first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, administrations. Look at the different things. Helps, even helps, meaning just being a helper. Administrations, meaning the ability to govern. A varieties of tongues are all, and so all these are the functions. And this is only a short list. It's not a complete list. These are a representative list of our functions. Uh, uh, the mix of all these gifts being expressed through our lives. Of course, not all do the same thing. So verses 29 and 30 says, are all apostles? These are rhetorical questions. And the answer to every, each one of them is a no. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Are all workers of miracles? Do all have gifts of healings? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? No. These, these are functions. All of us are not necessarily in the same function. We have the gift, but our functions differ depending on where Christ has placed us, right? Verse 31, but earnestly desire the best gifts, and yet I show you a more excellent way. Now, I want to just make a little passing note here, because there is a certain school of thought in Christendom called cessationalism, where they say, you know, all these things stopped at the end of the first hundred years. My question, is the church here, or did the church stop? Let's try the question again. Is the church here or did the church stop? The church is here. If the church is here, are these gifts still here? Yeah. Nowhere in scripture does the Bible say, and he, it says here, and God has set in the church. Verse 28. Nowhere in scripture do you say, and God unset from the church. No. He said it there, it's still there. All these graces and gifts and functions are still in the church. So you don't buy into cessationalism. It's just an expression of unbelief. You don't believe the Bible. You claim to, but you don't. So we move along to verse 31. <laughs> what does verse 31 say? It's speaking to the believer. Earnestly desire the best gifts. What are the best gifts? The best gift is the gift that is best suited for the moment. If you're ministering to somebody who is sick... What would be the best gifts? Gifts of healings, workings of miracles. If you're ministering to somebody who's got a complex problem, what would be the best gifts? The word of wisdom. You now, uh, this past Tuesday, and I do have these wonderful experiences throughout the course of the week. A past Tuesday, a, a person came to me, he met me in the office, and for about 45 minutes, he was describing a situation. Uh, all this problem, all that. And I was listening to him. And I, I was listening to him, of course, let him talk, but I was also listening to God. I said, God, what do you want me to tell him? So for 45 minutes you're saying, I said, God, what are you saying? At the end of it, I just spoke one sentence. Just one sentence. So Pastor, that's answers. That's the question. That's the answer I wanted to hear. That's what I all that's what I wanted to know. Meeting over. This meeting could have ended in five minutes. <laughs> but you know, sometimes people need to talk and it's good. You've got, you've got to let them speak. But really, all I had was one word from God for his situation. Enough. He got it. So, these gifts, you desire the gifts. So God, when he's talking, so God, give me a word of wisdom. So tell me what to tell him. I need the right word to tell him. A word of wisdom about his future. He, he decide what to do next and all those things that happen in his life. So what do I do next? One word. So you, what do you do? You desire the best gifts in your situation, whatever you do. Right? You're ministering to people. Uh, there was another situation, you, you know, uh, uh, where I had to discern what is in this heart of this person. Same thing. Let him talk. Listen to God. Lord, what is it? What's really in his heart? And also, God, what is your purpose for his future? So I have to listen. So let him talk. But at the end of, the, uh, end of it, I have to say something. But I want to say according to what I hear from God in that situation. Are you listening? So these gifts are there for us to use in and every day, or, or whatever your situation is. But you need to know how to flow in these things and how to use them. Now, I don't tell them, thus says the Lord, the Lord told me this. No. I know I heard from God while he was talking to me. I know the word of the Lord came to me. But when I say it, I just say, you know, hey, just do this, 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 you know. But I know. And that's exactly what he needed at that time. Are you with me? Right? So, if you and I, we design the best gifts, design it right where you are in your everyday life. Let's read through chapter 13 
Uh, we won't look at chapter 13 in detail, but let's read it and then we'll make a few comments and close. Chapter 13, verses 1 to 13. Though I speak with the, with the tongues of men and of angels and have not love, I have become a sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains but have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned but have not love, it profits me nothing. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself, is not puffed up, does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, is not provoked, thinks no evil. Does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. But whether there are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part will be done away. When I was a child, I spoke as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I know, but then I shall know, just as I also am known. Now abideth faith, hope, and love, faith, hope, love, these three, but the greatest of these is love. It's very interesting that while he's talking about gifts and spiritual functions, he's talking about walking in love. Now, usually this chapter is read during weddings. <laughs> and, you know, you're preaching a sermon during a marriage, a ceremony, and you preach out of this, you talk about love, that's fine. But really the context is on the, in the expression of the gifts of the Spirit and in fulfilling your ministry function. Walk in love. Whatever you do, whatever you and I do in exercising the gifts, we must be governed, we must be guided, we must be motivated by love. So when you're serving God, when you're serving people, let love be the motivation. Are you with me? God, I love that person. That's why I'm willing to take risks. That's why I'm willing to you know, minister by the power of the Spirit. That's why I'm willing to press in. Why? Because I love the person. Let love motivate you to manifest the gifts, to express the gifts, and to fulfill your function. It's not a duty. It's not a job. It's a love, love thing. It's a motivation by love. Amen? So three simple statements. Walk in love. Desire spiritual gifts. Step out in faith. So walk in love. Desire the gifts. He's not saying leave the gifts and walk in love. Because this entire chapter is sandwiched between two verses, 1 Corinthians 12, 31 and 1 Corinthians 14, 1, that say, pursue love and desire spiritual gifts. It's not an either or thing, it is both. It's like the two arms attached to the same body, you need both. Walk in love and flow in the gifts of the Spirit. There are other things in this chapter, for instance, he says, you know, when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part will be done away with. That which is perfect is not referring to the Bible. It's referring to us seeing the Lord face to face. Right? When that which is perfect is come, the Lord, when He comes, when we see Him, when we know even as we are known, then at that time, what is in part will be uh, done away with. The gifts are only partial expressions. They'll be done away with when we meet the Lord face to face. Amen? Now, one of the things... So the message is over. This is housekeeping, right? <laughs> One of the things uh, we've been thinking about is how do we encourage the expression of the gifts of the Holy Spirit amongst us as a body? It's one thing to know. It's one thing uh, to receive equipping, which we provide for you on the weekend school and through our publications. But it's another thing for us to practice that as a church body, okay? How do we do it? And you'll learn, we learn about this next, uh, next Sunday, when First Corinthians 14. What happened in Cor Corinth was, when they all came together, when people came together on, for their gatherings, they came with something. They came with a psalm, with a hymn, with a tongue, with a gift. They came to give. Yes, they did get, they get, they received teaching, they received impartation. But they also came to give. And we're not talking about money. We're talking about coming to give spiritually to the body. 
Are you with me? So I want to encourage you that when you and I come to church or come to these gatherings, our services, or the life groups, when you come together, you come with this intent of giving spiritually to people. You understand it? You come. So, but, but what can I give? Well, we just learned about the gifts. So when you come, you say, God, I, I just use me to bless somebody. So you're coming to minister to one another. You're coming to minister to one another. That's biblical. That's the way church is supposed to be. Church is not supposed to be an entertainment center. That's the theaters. Church is an equipping place where believers come to be equipped and where believers come to minister to one another. Are you understanding? So we're going to push all of us into that. Starting now. <laughs> so what we're going to try and do is, when we come together like this, uh, during our time, we will say, you know, just turn around and pray with somebody next to you. Very simple. So you turn around. Now, it is good if you turn around to somebody you don't know. Right? Just turn around. Just, you know, you, you turn around to somebody. And you just pray for them. Pray for them. That's a simple way to, to pray, uh, to give. Now, when you pray, ask be in tune, perceive in the spirit. Lord, do you have a prophecy for this person? Do you have a word of wisdom? A word of knowledge? Is there something I can give? If the person is sick or going is not well, Lord, can you release a gift of healing through me? Or if the, and you can maybe you can ask very quickly, uh, are you going through a problem? They say, yeah, I'm going through a problem. Lord, can you release the working of miracles through my life into that situation? Are you ready to do that? Yes or no? You know, you're just making yourself available, that's all. You know, Catherine Kuhlman used to say this. She said, God is not looking for golden vessels. God is not looking for silver vessels. All God is looking is for yielded vessels. That's all. He's looking for yielded, available people. And he said, okay, God, I'll just make myself available. As I turn and I pray for this person, maybe all I do on a Sunday, maybe I just pray for somebody. But... On a certain Sunday, while you're praying, maybe you receive a word of knowledge or a prophecy or a working of miracles released through you to minister to that person. Now you want to pray for two people or three, it's okay, uh, but we'll give five minutes. So whatever you can do <laughs> in that time, you do. After we dismiss, you're free to pray as many as people as you want. But you come to give. Are you understanding? Amen? All right, so let's stand to our feet. Worship team, please come up. So we're going to do, we're going to take five minutes to practice that. Now, there is no compulsion. If you don't want to pray for anybody, you just want to talk to God, be at peace. <laughs> no problem. But if you want to just turn around to somebody and say, can I pray with you? And just, you know, uh, just pray with them and, uh, you know, bless them. Maybe you can ask, can I, is there something, one thing? Don't give ten things. One thing, I can pray for you. You pray for that one thing bless their lives. Or maybe God may just release a, a, one of the gifts through your life, right? So you just release it, bless them with it. Is that okay? All right, worship team, come on up. Oh, there they are there, okay. All right, so for the next few minutes, just turn around, please. Uh, just find one person. We're going to do this only for a few minutes. Just pray with them. Uh, uh, let God bless somebody through you. Just, uh, just, you know, somebody you don't know. Just pray with them. Uh, uh, relax. If you don't want to do it, it's okay. But just take a few moments, just pray with somebody. Go to somebody, pray with them. Go ahead. All right, just hold hands, pray, pray for one another, pray for one another. Go ahead, just hold hands, pray, bless each other. Thank you.
Hallelujah, God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless one another. Bless one another. Thank you. Thank you. Let your Holy Spirit go. Let your Holy Spirit do wonderful things. Thank you. Thank you. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Really wonderful. 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 Amen. It's really wonderful to see this. Wonderful to see people just praying with each other, blessing each other, ministering to each other. It's wonderful to see it. So we'll try and do this almost every Sunday, you know, so come prepared. Don't come scared. <laughs> come prepared to just be a blessing to somebody. You, you say, God, put the right person next to me. I have a word in my heart. I want to release it on somebody. Somebody needs to hear this word. And you come with that word and say, God, put the right person next to me. And when we give you the signal, you release that word. Can you do that? Come prepared in the spirit. Lord, I want to bless somebody. I want to release a word of prophecy. I have a word of knowledge for somebody. Uh, you come prepared with that and just to bless people, to release people. You say, God, use me to bring healing to somebody. You know, you come with that, 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 that desire to give. The desire to give. The more you give, the more you will receive. Amen? So the, so we are, are a people. We're not, you know, just say, God, give me, give me, give me. So God, I want to give out. I want to give out. I want to give out. And the more you give out, He will give to you. The Bible says, he who waters will himself be watered. Amen? In other words, when you give out, you will receive. You'll be blessed. Amen? So we'll try to do this every Sunday. Come prepared uh, to do that. And, and let the Holy Spirit have His way through His people. Uh, he will do wonderful things. He will do mighty things. People will get healed. People will get delivered because somebody prayed with them. Somebody spoke a simple prayer and God did the work. Amen. And we want to hear those kinds of stories, those testimonies. Hey, I came to church uh, one little girl came and prayed for me. <laughs> I got healed. Hey, we want to hear those stories. Or I came to church, a total stranger turned around and said this to me. It changed my life. We want to hear those stories. And God's going to use you. Amen. Because you have a place in the body. You have a function. And God wants you to fulfill that function in the body. In different ways, different ways. Amen. Amen. I just want to speak a few words of healing and just blessing over you. And then we will close. Father, in the authority of Jesus' name, I speak over this gathering here. I speak over every person here, God. We take dominion over every work of the enemy. I take authority over sickness, over disease, over infirmity. And I say, you do not belong to the body. You do not belong to any person's body here. By the stripes of Jesus, we were healed. And so in Jesus' name, I command healing into everybody, every person that needs healing. I command healing now in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of infirmity, leave. Every injury uh, uh, to the bones, I command healing now. Uh, if your vertebrae has been, you know, discs in your vertebrae have been damaged, receive your healing. Any kind of injury to your bones, be healed now. I take authority over uh, demons of chronic illnesses, chronic diseases, long-term illnesses. I command you to leave in the name of Jesus. Now you just say, Lord, I receive. I receive this prayer. I receive this healing now. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We declare the work done. We declare the work completed. We declare it is finished. The healing is done. And let it manifest in people's bodies here in the name of Jesus.
of the Lord Jesus Christ. I also speak, O oh Lord, over their finances. Lord, your word says that you provide for all of our needs. For people who, who may be facing lack in their life in any area of finances, right now in the name of Jesus, I declare God's provision for you. That God makes His grace abound towards you. That you, always having all sufficiency in all things, will be able to abound to every good work. So Lord, let there be a release, a miraculous release, a supernatural release of your provision into their lives. They'll have money to pay, uh, to make the payments that they need to make in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Just agree with me as I'm saying and I'm declaring these things. Father, we thank you for it. And God, we speak your peace into our homes, our families. Uh, we take authority of us works of confusion, works that trouble homes and families and marriages, we command these things to cease. We command these things to desist. And we command peace, good understanding in the homes, the marriages, the families of your people in this place. And God bless each one in the places of work. Let there be unusual favor, God, as they go to their workplaces. Let their bosses, let their peers, Lord, look at them with unusual favor because you surround your people with favor like a shield. And the favor of God goes before your people. Unusual doors of opportunities open up for them in the name of Jesus. They get unexpected raises, unexpected promotions come into their lives because of the favor of God. Because the good hand of their God is upon them. Lord, do this in our day and our time for each one here in the name of Jesus. And we give you thanks. We give you praise. In Jesus' name. Amen. Before we close, I want to give an opportunity for any person here. You're wondering what all these people are crazy about. We love Jesus. And you are invited to come and love Jesus with us. If you've never opened your heart to Jesus, if you've never said, Jesus, come into my life, be my Lord, be my master, be my savior. I'm going to lead you in a simple prayer. Those of you watching online, wherever you are, join me in this prayer. If you've never done this before, you've never received Jesus into your life, He's the one who can forgive our sins, save us, deliver us. He's the one who brings us to become sons and daughters of God. If you've never done this before, just pray this with me before we close. Just say this with me if you'd like to do this. Lord Jesus, come into my life. Forgive my sins. Make me a child of God. And help me follow you. And you alone the rest of my life. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Anybody, you prayed this prayer with me for the very first time. I just want to raise your hand. You prayed this prayer with me for the very first time this morning. Just raise your hand wherever you are. We want to celebrate with you. Wow, I see two hands up there. God bless you guys. Anybody else? Just, anybody, just put your hand up. Anybody else? Wonderful, wonderful. God bless you. Our greeters will come to you right where you are. And they will give you a, a, a bag that has our resources. They'll also have a card that says decision card. Please write your name and your number on that card. And they'll receive that card back from you. And Samuel from our church office will call you. Give you instructions on how to use that bag and how to uh, grow in your faith. So please make sure you write your name and number on that card and give it back to, uh, to our creatures. All right, we're going to close. Let's close. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Heavenly Father, and the sweet fellowship of His Holy Spirit be with each of us always. Amen. Thank you for listening. We trust this message was a blessing to you. For more free resources, including sermons, sermon notes, TV programs, publications, please visit apcwo.org. For information on APC Bible College in Bangalore, please visit apcwo.org slash Bible College. Please remember to download the All People's Church Bangalore app from the app or Google Play stores.